True humility produces true peace. When we are truly humble, we recognize that we are sinful, selfish beings, and we are in need of a Savior. Not just one person, not just someone else, all of us are in need of a Savior. And when we believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and we repent of our sins, we begin to enter into this newness of life, this recognition that God is truly the God of all. He sees all, he rules over all, he is the uncreated creator of all things, he is the one by whom thought within his omniscient mind that which we see and now is. He differentiates everything. He gives similarity in certain things as far as different blades of grass, but not even one blade of grass is the same as another. We know that grass is grass, but not even one is the same as the other. There is differentiation on the very uh, smallest level of things because God is the God of detail. And when we are humble enough to give glory to God, to know that God is God and we ourselves are not God. We ourselves are sinful beings that need God. When we understand that whatever we do, God can do easily. He doesn't need us. But nonetheless, He created us and He desires fellowship with us. Again, He doesn't need us. It is to our benefit that we can come to know Him. He's given us the gift of life with breath in our lungs, but he offers us a greater gift, the gift of everlasting life by believing in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and repenting of our sins and, and keeping us when we do that, when we become born again, we're saved from hell, we're saved from our sin, and we enter in to things that no wicked or carnal or sinful person or unbeliever apart from Christ can understand. Only by taking that leap of faith, which is not a blind leap of faith, there is much uh, reasonableness to the faith. There's much evidence and proof that God exists, that uh, God is who he said he is, that Christ is who he said he was. There's much evidence historically, philosophically, scientifically, archaeologically. All things point to God. And may we just pray that all would come to know God. Because when we know God, we will continually humble ourselves because there's true peace. When we are humble, we don't have to try and portray to someone something that we are not. We don't have to live pridefully. We don't have to feel like we have to have all the accolades and credentials and accomplishments in order to uh, you know, have peace and be seen or deemed worthy. When we truly have humility, we can lay aside these things, cast them at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, may thy will be done. Anything profitable or good done in my life, Lord, is done by you. I take credit for nothing. And it's that humble disposition where there is peace, where we aren't trying to excuse sin. We aren't trying to cover it up, but we're humble enough to admit when we fall short, when we do sin, when weaknesses overcome us, when temptation arises us, arises and we fall into it. When we are humble, there is peace that can come through that. And true humility produces true peace. We know that humility is seeing ourselves for who we are and seeing Christ for who he is. True humility exalts God and it uh, denies self. True humility is what produces true peace because we are no longer putting on a facade. We have we're not trying to earn other people's respect by what we do, what, we, what we've done, uh, by how we speak, by how eloquently we are. We are merely just living as God has designed us to be, seeking him and just desiring for his will to be fulfilled. And when we are humble enough to live according to God's way, we're going to have peace in all situations. We can be afflicted, persecuted. We can go through struggles and trials and tribulations. We can go through hurt and pain, even illness, and we can have peace in the midst of it because God is there with us in the midst of the fire.